This series of videos is about how I built a solar generator. Uh, this is the uh, newest version. I started out many, many years ago building stuff that looked like this. Just uh, what I, today I would call a bag of parts, solar panels, some components. Uh, you wired it together in the field depending on what you needed. Maybe you stuck in a battery, whatever. It was not convenient. It was easy to make mistakes and burn stuff up. To today's stuff where it's pretty much goof proof, uh, easy to use, and extremely easy to carry whether you're camping or prepping. Um, yeah, there, I learned a lot of lessons along the way and, and I'll try to share those lessons with you. And here are some of the devices I made in between and some of the controllers that I tested for the last iteration of the device. This is the first video in a four-part series and I've titled this one 101. We're going to cover the different aspects of building a uh, portable camping system. You can use it for camping, you can use it for bugging out, whatever you need. Power failures, I've used mine for power failures. So these are the system basics. Let's talk about some things I've done that did not work. That's kind of educational because everybody comes up with these same ideas and they say, hey, let me try that. So some things that I've tried that failed and the first one, for the most part, hooking a solar panel directly to a load, you know, through a fuse and a switch, what have you, but just a direct connection does not work well. The solar panel will go to like a motor or a device. The benefits are it's easy, it's cheap. There's no regulation on the system. I mean, I mean no voltage, no power regulation. So you can over or under voltage something. You can over or under current something. You can kill a device quite easily. It can work for water pumps and similar. So for example, if you have a cattle stock tank, something like that, this system will work. You can hook a panel directly to a pump. I've done it, it does work. Some other things that do not work. Uh, hooking a solar panel directly to a battery and then to the output, motor, light, whatever. First of all, you'll get over voltage. It'll, the solar panel will probably produce somewhere between 17 and 22 volts it will kill your battery very quickly. It will boil it dry. There's absolutely no regulation. It can over or under voltage the output. So if you have something that's sensitive, it will kill the load. And there's no really good application for this one. This is something that I've tried that's okay. And in the early days, let me see if I can get this. Turn on my light. This is just a simple regulator. It prevents over voltage, but it won't prevent under voltage. And this was good for charging a battery. So that would be this box right here. This would be that thing. And it would connect to the battery and then to the load. So that has some limited applications and that's just solar panel to the regulator, to the battery, and then to your load. Uh, it's cheap. It's relatively cheap. The lack of low voltage cutoff. So this device, that I showed you has no low voltage cutoff. So if the battery gets too low and you can see there's nothing that's going to stop it, that it'll just drain the battery all the way, it'll shorten your battery life. So it's okay for low current applications. I've used it for running handy talkies and little portable radios and such like that. Here are some things that work well and this is what I do today. I don't mess with any of the earlier systems. Uh, solar panel, controller, load and battery and the controller just makes everything really easy. I've got some, let me show you. Here are a couple of them I've tried and they work pretty well and these are very similar. They can come with very basic functions or an unbelievable number of functions. These both have on off switches here and here for the output. So you have solar panel, controller, battery, and load. It's easy. It's reliable. And yeah, the cost is a little bit higher because you do have to pay for one of these. It has a low voltage cutoff and a high voltage limit. So those are very good things to keep your battery, uh, long life for your battery. And you can use it for every application that I've run across. So a good solar system is going to have four parts. You're going to have the solar panel. You're going to have the output. So that's the stuff you're going to want to drive. Uh, it can be lights, tablet, PC, phone, TV, radio, anything like that. You're going to have storage. So these are batteries typically. We're going to talk mostly about sealed lead acid because that's the cheapest. 
Some people are doing lithium these days. Uh, it just takes a little bit different controller or some controllers can be configured for different batteries. That also works. And then you're going to need the controller, which we just showed you. These are the parts of a typical solar controller. You're going to have status indicators. So you'll have, for example, a light that says whether the solar panel's providing any uh, input. You're going to have the battery status. So it's usually like a red, yellow, green. So the battery's in good shape, bad shape, fully charged, not output status. So whether you're taking power out of the system or your application's pulling something, then some of them will have a, like a little window and it will tell you what the controller status is. Uh, and this one will have an on off switch. Some of them have an on off switch. Both of the ones I showed you earlier do. And they almost always have these same six screws or connections. They'll have the solar input, plus and minus, battery, plus and minus, and output, plus and minus. So these are your applications. These are the things going out to your, to your lights or radios or whatever. Note that many of these controllers are positive common or positive ground. So you cannot connect the negatives together like you would say on your automobile or something. You cannot do that. The main controller functions are it regulates input from the solar panels, so it's going to prevent overvoltage coming from the solar panels. A 12 volt solar panel does not actually put out 12 volts. It'll put out somewhere between 17 and 22, so you got to watch for that. Also, a lot of them will boost the voltage. So, for example, when their cloud comes over or whatever, it will actually amplify. So, say your solar panel drops to 10 volts, it'll actually use a little circuit inside there to boost the power up to the voltage up to a point where it'll continue to charge the battery. So that's a good thing. It regulates battery charging. It's going to keep the battery and charge rate appropriate. So gel cell, flooded, all these types of batteries, they have different voltage requirements. Uh, some of the batteries I've used in the past are 13.8 volts, and you need to keep it really close to that, and that's what this controller will do for you. It also regulates the power output. It's going to shut off the the output in case the battery falls too low, because if you drain a battery all the way down, it usually kills it. And it's also going to do over amperage shutoff. So if you try to pull too much power from the battery, it'll also shut the shut the uh, system off. Here are the connections. We talked about them briefly earlier. We have the solar input plus and minus. So this is the solar panel. You have the plus coming off there. I show it going through a fuse and a switch. And a quick note here is I've got the switch uh, that connects and disconnects the battery and the solar panel. I've got them connected together because if you shut off one or the other but not both at the same time some some of these uh, controllers will do some pretty weird stuff so I switched mine off both together so there's a switch and there's the connections to the uh, to the controller and then there's the battery again fuse and then switch and then the negative lead and then the load I have the switch and the fuse and then of course the negative lead. So very simple wiring. This is also an on off switch. So most controllers have an on off switch and if it has it you may not need this but in any event that's there. The next video is going to cover matching the power parts and it is the trickiest part of putting together one of these solar systems. You need to make sure that all four parts of the system are matched well or it will not work well. The first one is the solar panel, the next one is the output, the next one is the storage, and the fourth one is the controller. And we'll talk about all of those.